Okay, let's talk about aquifer tests. So, if we're getting water out of an aquifer, we want to know how fast can we get water out of there, how much will it draw down while we're getting water out of it, will it draw down too far, how fast will it draw down, how fast will it come back up if we stop pumping. And uh, a lot of times for groundwater supplies, for a big city or something, they'll have a well field. That means they'll have a number of wells. And by pumping on those wells, they can keep the drawdown in any one well from being too low. So they can keep water coming out of it. And they can actually alternate which wells they are on and off to get other wells time to recover. So the drawdown takes some time. We did the equilibrium well equations. That actually takes some time to get there. And that how much time it takes to get there is important and can tell us something about the aquifer. So from aquifer tests, which we measure the drawdown at the well and then usually at several monitoring wells, we can calculate the hydraulic conductivity and transmissivity. We can call, also calculate something else called the storage coefficient, which has to do with the transient behavior of the aquifer or how fast it draws down. We're actually in this class not going to talk about that right now, but uh, I'm going to go through a method that does not calculate the storativity. This is a simple method, probably the simplest aquifer test is a slug test, and it's done typically for unconfined aquifers. Most aquifer tests are for confined aquifers, and if they're well, if an aquifer is unconfined, we have some adjustments to that. So it's called a slug test because the way it works is we put a slug of water in or take a slug of water out of a well, and then we watch how fast it goes back to where it was. Now, I've done this both ways. We uh, actually, the first ones I did, we actually had a, working at a remediation site, and we had pipe filled up. PVC pipe with concrete and we had a pressure meter at the bottom of the well which was calibrated to give us the the uh, height of water in the well and we dropped that down there inside the well and so it would displace water and so the water would rise in the well and we measure how fast it it went back down to where it was. Most of the slug tests I've done we go the other way we have a pump and really there's not that in the monitoring wells there's usually two inch well they weren't that deep so you could suck the water out of there pretty fast with a pump so we zoom suck the water out of there with a pump we'd also have a pressure meter down at the bottom that gave us the level of water in the well and then we'd watch it come back in the well and see how long it takes and then we plot that and we'd use this method I'm talking about here, the Bauer-Rice slug test method, to calculate the hydraulic conductivity. I remember one site, turns out the monitoring wells were in like real clay, so almost a, a clay. And we did the pump test, we did the slug test in the morning, sucked the water out, and then we're watching the water come back in, and it's going really slow. We put a tape down there to measure to see if the our pressure meter is really giving us the right information it was and then it's just come back slow and then we went to lunch came back it was still working its way up very low and with, uh, waited overnight came back the next day so it took a really long time for that water to come back up and that was indicative of a very low hydraulic conductivity so here for this slug test I'm just going to start with a an example and then there there's uh, one in the homework. So I have this well, this this diagram here is copied from the Bauerice slug test method. And we have an unconf a well in an unconfined aquifer. This is the bottom of the aquifer, the bedrock or clay layer. And then we have this well put in there. And there's a couple dimensions here. There's the length of the well the saturated length of the well below the water. We don't care what's happening above the water. We want the length of the pipe in the well. We want the height of that water, the water table, before any pumping or slugging happens. We want you know that number from the bottom of the aquifer. Like in the equilibrium well equations, we need to know the actual height of the water. That's big H. LW is the length of the well. The screened interval is LE 
in our description here. And actually, in uh, our example we're going to do, it's actually screened all the way, just makes things a little bit, oops, makes things a little bit simpler. We're actually going to screen it all the way down. Our well is sitting on top of the, sitting on top of the bedrock there, screened all the way down and all the way up to the water table. So in this case, in our example, LW, LE, and H all turned out to be the same thing. And in our example, it's two meters. We can do this in metric units or in feet units. So those are all two meters. We drilled a six centimeter wide borehole and inside that borehole we put in a pipe that's four centimeters in diameter. So we have those two different numbers. We have the radius of the casing, RC, that's four centimeters, and the ra radius of the hole, RW. And the reason that matters is because, we'll see in a second, the water that first comes back in the well is coming from this gravel pack around there. So this, this annular space around the well is filled with gravel. And we don't want to, we don't care about the hydraulic conductivity of the gravel. We want the hydraulic conductivity of the soil outside of that. So we want the radius of the borehole. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have the rise and fluid or draw it out at time zero. So we're going to, so we use in the original document, they use an, a Y for this variable. You see this other places in books or something, they'll use an, a little H for that. But this is Y is the drawdown. And again, you could go up and it'd be the draw up. I don't know. So the water is going to drop down somewhere at the start. And it's going to be down to here. And then it's going to come back up with time. So the rise of the fluid at time zero, and now uh, there's a little exception. Well, I'll explain more about that in a second. But And then in our method, we pick off a number for the y at some later time. And then these are some other things that we need to calculate along the way. So we punch the numbers in there, and then we can calculate the hydraulic conductivity with this. So this y0 and yt, that's the drawdown at time zero, drawdown at later time. This is that later time, and then these are some of the parameters of the well. Re is the radius of influence of the well, which we can't find. Oh, well then why is it in the equation? Well, you can estimate it with this term here. So the estimate is log of Re over Rw is, can be estimated from this equation here and the uh, there's actually a couple equations if you look at the method itself and I put that in the notes if you want to look at it you don't need to really do anything with it but if you're interested in in it this is the the Bauer Rice paper and they have this is that diagram I, I pulled off of there they have different equations depending on whether you know I talked about how in our case the the uh, the screen interval the height of the water and the length of the well all the same thing well if they're not there's a diff there's another equation our equation is the one where it says one where LW equals H that means it's screened all the way from the not necessarily screened, the well is installed on top of the bedrock, so all the way up and down. So we'll pick that off. So that's the equation we're going to use, and then we get C from that diagram, which I copied over in the document here. So in our case, we're going to use this one for fully penetrating, or the, the well, the LW is the same as H, so it goes all the way down to the bedrock there. So we're going to use this equation, and that equation uses a C variable. The other, is one, the other one uses A and B, and C is a function of LE over RW. What's LE? LE is the screened interval over RW, the radius of the borehole. 
So in our case, the screened interval is 2 meters. The radius of the borehole hole is 0 0.06 meters, or 6 centimeters. So we take that ratio of 2 meters over 0 0.06 meters, that's 33. So if I look at this, if I take a 33, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, so a little past 30, right in there somewhere. 10, 20, 30, and that's going to be 2.5 or 3-ish, somewhere in there. So I'm going to put in, actually I'm going to change it on my spreadsheet. Two, I'm going to do 2.5. I could blow that up and make it, get it a little more precise. But let's go with 2.5. So C is 2.5. Whoops, sorry. I can edit that out. Probably won't, but I could. 2.5. I did it. So then the uh, the in our equation here, the log of R U over R W. So in this, we're we're taking we're not calculating R E. We're taking this combined term and we're getting it from this equation here. So in this equation we need the, the log of LW over RW, so we had LE over RW, LW over RW, in our case LW is the same as LE, which is the same as H, so that's also 2 meters over 0 0.06 meters is 33. So then log of RE over RW equals 1.1 over the uh, log of LW over RW, which is 33, plus C, which is 2.5, over LE over RW, which is also 33. And it's actually the inverse of that whole thing. So if I do that, and I just change my number there, it's, I come up with equals 3.94. All right, so let's go back up here. Elf, I was ruined. <laughs> it's kind of stuck in my throat there, stuck in my throat. Ralph, look, I was ruined. <laughs> The log of RE over RW, the combined term is, what did I say it was, 3.94. I really know it to three digits. I kind of said, eh, 2.5 on the C value. But All right. Now, if I go to my plot of my data, the way the method works is I plot the drawdown on a log scale versus time on a linear scale. And this comes from, it's like a Taylor series expansion or something like that of the original equation. But th if we do that, there should be a region, so it drops fast at first. And then later on, it kind of slowly approaches back down to zero drawdown or back down to where it started but in between there should be a section there that's pretty much a straight line so I'm going to draw the a straight line through there and the way the method works is it takes the slope of that line and plugs it into the equation. Well, the slope of that line is I can get from its log of y0 over yt over t if I choose y0 and then some other point in time. So now here's where I say the y0 thing. So these first couple points, the reason they drop so fast 
is that's the area right around the well, the gravel pack draining. Then that drains, then it hits a region where now the soil around that gravel pack is draining. So the slope of this thing here represents the, tells us the hydraulic conductivity of the aquifer. So this would be the, to get the slope of that, I'm going to take one point here, I'm going to call that y0. So that's the intercept of the line. If I look at our data, the lowest time, the drawdown is 3.64 meters. But if I extend this line up there, then I get the, that's what I need to do for the slope. So y0 is not the, the first data point. It's the intercept if I extend this line. And it looks like that's right around, let me see, that's 0.11. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Is it like right at at uh, zero? I'm sorry, right at uh, two, two point. I'm going to say it's because I have this in my spreadsheet. I could do with the two. I'm going to say this is. So I draw and extend the line through the straight part of the drawdown curve. Water at time zero is y zero. I'm going to say that's 2.2 meters. So I'm going to say my y0 is 2.2 is, uh, .2 meters. So that's the extension of it up here. Now for the other part of it, so the slope is, it's the rise over run, so it's y0 minus y some time but this is actually on a log scale so I'm going to do it if you look at our equation there it's the, the k equation log of y 0 over y t so log of y 0 minus log of y oops t equals log of y0 yt okay you got it and then the run is just the from 0 to t so over some t so what t do I use so I'm, I decided I'm using this as one of my points for my slope I can use any point along that straight line so I can actually grab one of my data points and say okay yt is this one would be looks like it's uh, 18 seconds and so yt equals 0 0.44 meters at t equals 18 seconds or I can extend it down past the line here and I can say that the y is 0 0.1 at the uh, time of, what is it here? Actually, this might not be very straight there. I'll say 36 seconds. That's not what I had in my spreadsheet, but I'm going to say that now. So I can do either of those. I can pick off a point on that graph from my data, or I can pick out where it hits the... Uh, Thirty-two, four. I'll say thirty-six seconds. So just any point along that straight line there. So let me put these numbers back up here. I'm going to do the point one in thirty-six seconds. So back up here. This was two point two. This was zero point one meters. We didn't actually get there, but this is just any point along that line. I can make up the line. And then uh, and then 36 
seconds. So then I can plug all these numbers into that equation. I'll scroll down here and do it. So again, I said, well, with my numbers here, y is 0 0.1 meter at time of 36 seconds. So I can plug my equation. So k equals rc squared, which rc was the radius of the casing because the water's dropping in the casing, so we actually, that's the 0 0.04 meters squared times the log of RE over W. Oh, that's the combined term. That was up here. We said that's get 3.94. Three point nine four is that term there. Over two times L E, that's the screened interval, that's two meters. Times one over the T, the T I chose was thirty six seconds. Log of Y zero. I said the Y zero is two point two meters y at my later time is 0 0.1 meter and then if I think I got it here scroll down oh. so k equals 0 0.000 and the units in that are meters per second. Meters squared divided by meter gets one meter divided by seconds. So that's equal 6.8 meters per day, something like that. So in the homeworks, you're given one of these. This is actually, we do it in feet now. So it's installed on top of the bedrock in an unconfined aquifer. So your LW is equal to the big H on that one. And we use that first equation like we did in the, in the example with the C. The casing radius is two inches and the screen is five feet long. The water table is 12 feet above the bedrock layer. Okay, so LW and H are 12 feet and LE is five feet. So those are not all three the same in this one. Gravel pack of two inch is in radius surrounds the well. So the RC is two inches and then RW is it is another two inches so it's four inches. RC is two inches and RW is four inches. All right. Well is quickly emptied so we're doing the one where we get the water out and the initial drawdown is 9.8 feet at zero. That is not, remember, that is not y zero. The change in water level with time is listed in the following table using the Bauer-Rice slug test method which we just did calculate k in the aquifer. So you plot that up and so you plot that up and you're going to plot the drawdown on a log scale and the time on a linear scale and then draw a line through the straight line portion of that and then solve it. So that's the Bauer-Rice slug test method. That's all you need for the next homework and so I'll let you go with that.